as you know, like every different European country has different uh, follower culture. How different is Belgium from Luxembourg, from Germany, from Holland? We would say, yeah, we're completely different. Somebody that lives in Colorado would say, like, those people look the same. You know, they sound more or less <laughs> the same. Like, if Those they speak just Europeans. English, yeah, you know, they're like, you know, like West, North, you know, Northwest, Western Europeans, like they're exactly the same, you know. But from a volleyball standpoint, a volleyball development standpoint, like resources are different, you know, volleyball culture is different. Um, what I see, and then it's not really something to, to publicate or depending on your answer also, um, what I see <laughs> is that already in a country like Belgium, where we have this North and South, you know, like the North is Flemish, so we speak Dutch, and in the South it's uh, Walloon, so it's French, and so nobody really plays volleyball. Uh, in the North we do, and we have some decent, average to decent European Champions League teams, which is, which is uh, Mosaic and Ruslan. Uh, talking about pipeline and volleyball academy. So we have a volleyball academy that uh, gets uh, is subsidized and which already from the uh, the first two grades of high school, 12, 12 to 14 year olds, um, already the selection or like the criteria to be part of the academy. And the academy is just a school where a bit more talented players get more opportunity to train, which is the only opp more opportunity where you can train with the more advanced coach, let's say. The criteria are pretty harsh. And the criteria, okay, then we have to talk about criteria. What are those criteria? You know? uh, height is number one, still. O already obvious there, height is a criteria. Like how smart or not smart is, is it to, of course, you subsidize. So you can only take in these kind of players. You cannot like take in 200 players. But there are players that have a heavy wish to make it in volleyball or to do something with volleyball because they're passionate about the sport. Like how bad is, is it to put players outside of that system and tell them, look, you're not good enough because you lack some physical conditions or physical uh, specifics. When we talked about the flywheel, about volley brains, and about obviously what you're doing, there was also like an, op an opposite negative flywheel about these kind of situations. Yeah. I'm not really asking a question now, but you for sure have an opinion. You know? Well, I mean, you, you know, your country is, I, I didn't know that the, 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 the North South, even your smaller country, that's pretty fascinating. I, I kind of come at it from a volleyball is a lifetime sport like tennis and golf and things that cost a lot more money and because it's such a wonderful lifetime sport you know we have the 80 and over national championships and all these countries are playing each other in the nike masters games you know even in their 50s and 60s um i i want people to have an experience of a healthy lifetime sport that doesn't have really too much in concussions very low on any other injuries, non-contact sport, you know, not a collide, colliding sport. And to that spirit, you know, if I were to define long-term athletic development as a term or anything, all I want to do is give kids an opportunity for volleyball to be their sport. And I want them to have a, develop a love of the game by their training experiences and their play experiences. You know, I, I talk about volleyball math. If you have four kids and a ball, what do they do? Well, they play doubles. You have four kids, a ball, and a coach walks in or an adult walks in and what it happens? Well, they start to drill. And to get this lower level experience of the joy of volleyball to happen, you you have an advantage in Belgium over some of the stuff I'm doing with the leave a ball or keep, let's keep the ball flying foundation um, you know that whole program is doing some amazing stuff in Africa and uh, Indonesia area where there's only three balls and 50 kids <laughs> that's not your country's problem you have enough volleyballs the problem remains, though, is that they play too much six-on-six six when they're young, too much uh, non-like futsal or non-three-on-three -three basketball. They play too much six-on-six. Six. They adultize it right away, 
And this is the experience of a, of a boy discovering volleyball in his first class. It would look like this. It would go. And then he'd rotate. And he's supposed to like this sport when he doesn't do anything. He just watches people play tennis back and forth and touch the ball. When you do doubles, you, you don't have that situation. So the long nets that you see in Europe, I use ribbons from a, a fabric store that are two inches, you know, five centimeters wide, and they look like the top of the of the net. And I just run ribbons <laughs> everywhere I can. And you play doubles, and you play like doubles in the sense that you can put like 10 courts on one long ribbon and play five minute matches. And you and I play together all the way around for that hour. And the next day I'm with a new partner and I'm going to play another doubles thing, but I'm playing, I'm not drilling and I'm letting the game teach the game and I'm having fun, <laughs> you know, fun. What a great word. So to get the school teachers to understand that um, can be challenging because that's where a lot of kids experience the sport first, but it's so important for the future of a pro league in a country to have that base of kids who love the game boys and girls um and when you let the game kind of teach the game because you're so busy now you've got 10 courts to worry about not one i mean in america you, every gym in this country of mine there are six basketball hoops up every even the elementary smallest elementary school has six hoops up when that teacher goes to volleyball, they put up the net and they go into the closet and they get out the ball and the kids play 12 on 12 and it's boring as hell. You know, there's no reason I'm going to say, oh, I want to keep playing volleyball. So just that little change where you can, you know, we can talk about it for, like you said, another whole session, but that change helps everything up the pipeline that whole rising tide lifts all boats it's it's a big deal in developed countries and non-developed countries to give them a chance to keep the ball flying to you know to rally it